Hey everybody, Mike Steele here with Barbecue Champs Academy. We got a great lineup for you tonight with Mr. James Minotti and Mr. Matt Overson. Uh, one barbecue cook, one steak cook. We're going to talk a little bit about all things barbecue and steak tonight. Uh, I'm really glad that we've got everybody already coming in. Looks like we already got 10, 12 folks already on and we appreciate you being here. Uh, as always, if you would, pop on, let us know where you're from and say hi. We'll throw you up in the chat. I'm glad finally the weather broke. It has been raining, cats and dogs. I saw two frogs waving a white flag and a duck floating down in my driveway. It's been that bad. So I was kind of worried that it was going to be really loud in here because one time we had some rain before and, man, the echo was just pretty bad. But uh, we got pretty lucky. The rain finally moved out. It's just a light little drizzle right now. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that we're able to, to have our show tonight. So uh, really looking forward to it. We got, like I said, two great guests. And uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about barbecue and steak tonight. If y'all have, once again, any questions, as we always do, uh, man, please feel free. Throw them out there. We'll try to answer them. Uh, we're going to have a lot of questions and answers tonight for everybody, uh, especially those in the state competition. Matt's going to be talking a little bit about uh, the World uh, Championship coming up here in Fort Worth. We're about two months away, a little less than two months away, so that's going to be pretty cool. And uh, Matt's got some big announcements that he's going to be making. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, here in just a minute. And obviously, we're going to talk with James, who's coming off a huge weekend uh, this past week, grand champion at the Hold'em and Hit'em. That's two grand champions in a row for him. He's been on an absolute tear. And we're going to talk a little bit about him, see where, where he's come from in the background of barbecue, and um, get some insight from him. And talk about some of his woodwork uh, that he does. He does some phenomenal woodwork, makes some incredible trophies, some awesome wooden boxes to put the foil and stuff in. And uh, he'll show us a little bit about that. He's got some uh, trophies that he's working on for the Texas Chrome Heroes Foundation. Uh, last year it was the six pack. Uh, we had Joey on the show last week. I think this year it's going to be a, a nine pack where they take the top six um, competitions. And uh, we'll talk a little bit about that. Well, we got a few folks coming in. I was wondering if y'all was going to comment. First of all, we've got Scott on here. Uh, thank you. Uh, you. I know you've got to be in some relation uh, to James. I know that Greg is here. And if I were, if I think I've got it right, I think James is your uncle, uh, Greg. So we appreciate you being here. Uh, Cassie, all the way from the land down under. Thank you for being with us today. Uh, Justin, as always, we appreciate you being here. Vince, brother. Uh, you know, I know that you got this new, uh, new, new, uh, chicken brine out and I seen it posted. Lee Hickle told me a little bit about it. Um, uh, I'm going to have to get you on the show a little bit to talk about some of the new things that you've got going. Uh, we had you on, I know last year, I'd love to get you back again. And, uh, let's talk about some of your new product that you've got. I know that you've got a new uh, salt, pepper, garlic. I think it was more of a smoked flavor. And I saw that you had a awesome chicken brine. I know Lee Hickle got a chance to try it. I don't know why I didn't get a chance. So anyway, I've heard it was pretty good. And um, we're going to have to get you on as well. So uh, Nathan, we appreciate you being here. Good evening, Mr. Steve. Thank you for being here. Wild Aces baby. That's right. Uh, Mr. Danny Titus, we're getting hammered with wind and rain down here. Well, buddy, I'm telling you what, I'm glad it's down there because we have had enough of it up here. I don't know how many inches of rain we've had. We've had to have at least two, two and a half inches of rain today. It has just been miserable. So um, anyway, glad it's out of here and glad you've got it, Danny. I hope everything's going to go well. You don't get too much of that wind. All right, so Scott says, brother to James, Greg's dad. Well, there we go. We got it all going now. So Got the Minotti family in the house. Uh, let's see. Stephen, thank you for being with us tonight. Blake, let's see what we got. Looking forward to the show tonight. Thank you, sir. I think we're going to have a pretty good one. Uh, what else we got? Mr. John, uh, John, thank you for being with us tonight. Uh, Caitlin, how are you doing? Hey, hey, happy Tuesday. Caitlin, I can't remember when that Georgia competition was. I don't know if it was this weekend or next weekend. So uh, you're going to have to let me know. I haven't seen you posted, so uh, I take it was not this weekend. I know you said you was going to Vegas. We're going to be in Vegas on February the 3rd. My wife is like, well, we got to drop by on Saturday and go check these guys cooking steak in a parking lot. So we're going to probably swing by Friday and see all the SEA cookers. Um, I've got to find out 
Uh, maybe I'll reach out to Candace the times of when the first ancillary turn-ins are and things like that so we can kind of get some time frame of uh, when to be there. But we are looking forward to getting uh, a chance to visit with everybody out in Vegas. So let's see. I will get you some to try. Thank you, brother. Appreciate it. Now, Dan, thank you. And I appreciate you being with us as well. Uh, let's see. This weekend, we're headed out this Friday. Well, good luck. Good luck. I wish you all the best. And uh, Caitlin Crane, good luck. There you go. Got a few other folks already. Let me know if you're in. Let me know where you're at. Let me know how you're doing. And uh, give everybody just a few more minutes. Looks like we got about 32 folks on right now. And um, we, uh, we'll kick this show off. I always like to give everybody just a few minutes to come in so they don't miss the beginning of the show. Uh, we've had a pretty good weekend this past week. My wife and I drove down to New Orleans, Louisiana. And uh, it was absolutely awesome uh, down there. Unbelievable food. If you ever go down to New Orleans, you want to know some good places to eat. We can definitely uh, hook you up. First place you got to go is New Orleans uh, Seafood and Spirits. It is absolutely amazing food at an unbelievably good price. And my next place I tell you, when you got to go down there, you got to go to Mr. B's Bistro. You get the barbecued shrimp and get a side of mascarpone grits absolutely phenomenal so other places are good to eat down there but that is absolutely two of our favorite places to eat cheryl thank you for being here and uh, ace is wild yes ma'am yes ma'am let's see northwest indiana and waiting on snow tonight you can keep the snow so don't want no part of it uh let's see it's really good yes yes indeed so mark are you from down that away uh if you are i'm sure you've probably ate it a couple of those places i just know the last uh, night that we ate, we was there. We went this uh, New Orleans Seafood and Spirits, I think was the name of it. It was right next door to R&O Seafood. I've been to R&O two or three times. It was always pretty good. And uh, we saw this place coming out. They were really right next door to each other. It's unbelievable that you got two seafood places side by side. And I was like, man, let's go in here. And hands down, way better than R&O's. I, I mean, R&O's is good, but man, New Orleans Food and Spirit was phenomenal. So... All right, let's see who else we got here. Larry Vaughn Sr., good afternoon from Rolling Office 39 in South New Jersey. So, yeah, man, I'm telling you, that's some cold weather up there right now. Hey, Candace, how are you doing? I just got through telling Caitlin we're going to be uh, in Vegas on the 3rd of February. We're going to drop by on the 4th. And uh, let's see, she's already given me first ancillary turn in in Vegas is hot dog, and that's going to be at 1 o'clock. Oh, my God, please tell me Raz is going to be there where I can get a Raz dog. If anybody knows if he's going to be there, please let me know because I have got to try one of them. So, uh, yeah, Caitlin, if you know some of the other turn-ins and everything, let us know if that's the first turn-in, first turn-in for steak. We're going to try to time it when to be there. And I know I was going to reach out to Candace. I see that she just popped on. So I'd at least like to know what the, obviously the first turn in is ancillary. That's at one. I'm sure steak's going to be right behind it. And if there's a second ancillary and if there's a second steak, let me know that. But I, I've got to be there obviously for the hot dog. So and we'll probably just show up maybe at 12 o'clock and hang around till like two o'clock or two 30 or so. So let me know what some times are there. If not, I'm going to reach out to uh, uh, Candace, I'm sure she's got all of them. Uh, Robert, thank you for being here. Uh, Mike, appreciate you being here. James, brother-in-law, we cooked together. That's awesome, man. Congratulations on a great weekend. Uh, I have family lives 30 minutes from there. I'm telling you right now, it's, it's a great place. Unbelievable good food down there. Hey, Mike, I love New Orleans. Uh, I'm telling you, if you go down there, uh, New Orleans Seafood and Spirits is phenomenal. Mr. B's Bistro, get the barbecue shrimp with a side of mascarpone grits. Can't beat it. Ah, uh, so glad you're coming out. I can't wait, Candace. I remember the first time I showed up at an SCA event was over in Texas, and you was the first one, I think, that came up to me and said hi and uh, made me feel welcome, part of the family, and we we're looking forward to coming out. And uh, we're maybe if it's, everything's going to kick off where the turn-ins are at 1, we may try to get there at 12 o'clock and stay till maybe 2 o'clock or so. So let's see. I'm hoping to make Raz Dogs in Australia in the near future. All right, folks, we got our highest total. We're sitting here at 41. That's great. We appreciate everybody being here. Real quick, want to thank our partners. We couldn't do what we do without them. Thank you to Prairie Fresh. Love your ribs. Unbelievable pork products and pork butts as well. My good buddy, Mr. Brian Crawford at Lone Star Barbecue Pro Shop. And check out his awesome rubs as well. 
especially his season. All that stuff is so, so good. I don't know if I have a bottle behind me, but it is absolutely great. I don't see one behind me. Uh, Mr. Uh, Bill, Wild Bill, Texas Select Seasoning. Be sure to check him out. He's got some great, great products. David with Gunner Wilhelm Knives. Dustin Stanley at the Barbecue Store. Could not do what we do without him. Appreciate him so much. All queued up, Mr. John Lindsay. And last but not least, Daigle's Barbecue. Uh, their sauces and rubs are off the chart. I use them all the time in competition. You'll absolutely love them. Hey, without further ado, it's time to bring in our guest. And uh, let me get in Mr. James here real quick. He's going to be our first one. Mr. James, hey, brother, how are you doing? I'm awesome, Mike. How are you? Thanks for having uh, me. I appreciate you coming on, man. You have been absolutely doing very well here in the last competitions. I think you've now got back-to-back -back grand champions. You won a huge one this weekend, man. Hold them and hit them is nothing easy. I think there was, what, almost 75, 80 teams down there? And uh, yeah, and so for to you to go down there at that big of a competition and do as well as you did, man, congratulations, prompt to you. Philip Breeden's been killing it. I think he got RGC, yeah. and uh, man, to beat Phil, you know, you have to you have to be on your A game because Philip's been just absolutely killing it. And uh, man, I had to get you on the show. I just thought this would be a perfect time. Also, our next guest we want to bring in. I think he's no stranger to Barbecue Champs Academy. Uh, it's this man right here, Mr. Matt Overson, Aces Wild Barbecue, part of Team Wicked Pig. Anything else that you want, if you've ever uh, used the Wicked Pig product uh, on steaks or anything else, that's the man right there that created it. Congratulations, Matt, on a, another good year, and I'm glad Thank to you. have you with us here, brother. So. Thanks a lot. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to kind of start it off with James. Then, Matt, I'm going to switch it over to you. We'll talk a little bit. If anybody's got any questions or anything, you know, feel free to drop them in the chat, and um, we'll kind of roll from there. So, James, man, I want to I want to get back to you, man. You know, I've, I haven't got a chance to meet you. Uh, or, let's see, Greg would be your nephew, right? Am I get that right? So I haven't got a chance to meet Greg. Uh, yeah, I mean, he, I'm envious. I mean, he's got all these beautiful deer on this unbelievable lease that y'all are obviously on. He did invite me. I, I, my dad's 85 years old. He loves to hunt. He's always wanted the big trophy buck. And I talked to, to Greg last year about that. And he was like, man, just let me know and we will hook you up. And I just never even made the phone call this year. And I've got to surprise my dad with that. But I've, I've seen you, obviously, in a lot of his posts. I've seen you're doing very, very well in the competition. So I want to know about the man, the myth, the legend that we all want to start to be like because, man, you've been on a pretty good roll here lately. So tell us how you got into, you know, barbecue. Was did you have a mentor when you was young or what age did you start cooking? Tell us your story on that. Well, it's actually in my blood. My dad uh, had a barbecue restaurant. Oh, okay. He, the butcher, he came out of the military as a butcher and opened a uh, meat market and grocery store in Dickinson and in the 40s. And uh, so he had a barbecue store and, and uh, meat processing all the way up till 1980. And so uh, when I was a little kid, uh, we went and flipped briskets and cooked ribs and turkeys and whatever else that had to happen. And catered events and what have you so yeah i grew up in barbecue i got you all right so your dad was kind of a bigger influence than anything in in yeah, doing all of the pretty much in the in the way to to cut meat right. uh, you know i i do all my own deer processing and and uh knock down i we used to break down sides of beef and everything else so when it comes to prepping meat and everything else uh that's that's like uh back of my hand i got you I, there's another guy sitting over next to you on this screen that his dad's uh from what i understand is a pretty dead gun butch good butcher as well ain't that right matt oh god yeah. yep i okay. grew up in a butcher shop also <laughs> i think that crazy we got two guys that are both grew up in a butcher shop his <laughs> dad his <laughs> dad's up in the missouri ain't it missouri kansas yeah missouri area. Missouri. Yeah. yeah. He does a lot as well. Yeah. So, um, 
So James, I mean, did he kind of show you the ropes into cooking? I mean, what was his specialty? You know, we all, like before I ever did barbecue, I mean, I was like the rib guy. You know, I love cooking ribs and uh, that was kind of my go-to thing every year for usually like New Year's Eve or something like that or New Year's Day. So did he have something in particular that he was good at or was he just good at all of it? And then what did you transfer over into? My dad was actually the cook. He cooked brisket. He cooked spaghetti. He cooked pies, cake, uh, cornbread dressing. Oh, yeah. We still use his cornbread dressing recipe today on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And wow. it's uh, – he was just an overall chef, cook. He did all the cooking there. Uh, so it, I took – a lot of the things that uh, I learned from there and transferred them to what I do today. It, but but a, a lot of it is, uh, you know, uh, getting down to wake up, boy, we got to go turn smoked turkeys. You know? Right. So I've been around barbecue pits and, and smoking meats my whole life. Wow. What kind of, what kind of smokers did he cook on James? Oh, cinder block. Uh, cool. Yeah, with an I beam rail that pulled out a cage that held about forty briskets. Wow! And cooked over 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 the coals. Over a pecan fire. Wow, man! I bet that had to be some good, good brisket. You don't you don't see that no more, man. You don't see that anymore. Wow! So from there, how did you get into doing competition barbecue? Uh, well, I. I've been doing actually competition barbecue since probably the late eighties. Oh, really? Okay. And, uh, I, I cooked with some friends of mine in the Houston rodeo and, uh, several volunteer fire department cook offs around here. And then, uh, started cooking our local County fair, uh, probably 19, early 1990s got, uh, with some, a group of guys and, uh, started cooking. And uh, from 95 to about 2010, we were really just a local family cook-off team that did volunteer fire department cook-offs and uh, uh, county fairs, things like that, and probably won, I don't know, 200 trophies. And then work and kids came, and I kind of got out of it for a while. Right. And uh, about five or six years ago, uh, we decided, you know, we need to try this thing again. Right. So, uh, my pit was rusted out and bought, a, bought all new equipment and, and got back into it. What do you cook on now? I have a Lone Star Grills cabinet smoker and uh, race crew drum smokers. Okay. I see Mr. Jason, you know him. He's got a, can we get a, woo, there you go. So, yeah, yeah Jason. I, Jason's got some great drums, no doubt, no Drum. doubt. So, it's smooth, baby. yeah, I got a chance to see him up close and personal when Bill Purvis was here filming his class. He cooked exclusively on those drums, and man, he get them dialed in, and they just sit there. So, all day, all day. very, very, very efficient and very good. So, on my brisket, I just can't get off the offset. Yeah, so I you cook it on an offset. Your brisket's on an offset. Okay, still got to cook it on wood. Yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm the same way. So mine's an offset rotisserie. So I use a rotisserie cooker. So, oh, uh, goodness. Um, all right, man, we'll get to that. Corey's got a question for Matt. Can you cook? Can you use Wicked Pig on a brisket? If so, how? So yeah. <laughs> uh, how do you go about what? What are some of the what are some suggestions that you would do? And I know you got to be incredibly careful. It'll fall apart on you. So uh, have yeah, you got anybody uh, doing there's some guys uh, soaking it, um, using like uh, four cans of consomme and uh, two scoops of powder. Uh, there's some guys injecting it. Um, that's what I've heard. I haven't tried it yet. Uh, that's one of my things to do this summer is do a little more experimentation. So. Okay, there you go. All right. So, James, real quick, and we're going to get over to, uh, to Matt. So you, you laid off for several years, and when you came back, did barbecue change a little bit during it, that time? It changed a lot. <laughs> yeah. I, I basically had to relearn everything. Yeah. Uh, back in the day, we cooked choice briskets. We cooked four or five of them to get a good one. Right. And uh, 
you know, you'd open up all the foil and uh, say, okay, let's slice this one. And in a few minutes before turn in, you slice four briskets and said, okay, okay, we'll turn this one in. Right. And uh, now you cook one and see, okay, let's, we got to roll. Yeah. Got to roll with it. Yeah. That's for uh, sure. Yeah. That's it, for sure. The, uh, the sanctioned event cook-offs are, are, were really different for me. So uh, it took me a little bit to get used to it, uh, a little bit to learn it. Uh, my nephew, Greg, really got me uh, <laughs> got me in, involved in it a lot and uh, kind of he's, – he's my taste tester. I'm his taste tester. He lives next door, so – Right. Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we kind of bounce everything off each other, and it's, it's been good. Yeah, yeah. Have you taken any classes to help, you know, shorten that learning curve from anybody? Well, I've, I've taken Corey Mike's class, and I've okay. taken Robert Smith's class. And, uh, you know, other than that, it's been just trial and error in the backyard. Right, right. Taking those recipes, working it, seeing the techniques and stuff. Yeah, they, they definitely will shorten the learning curve. That is for they, sure. They so. help me a ton on uh, timelines and uh, – uh, writing down things, especially because I, I usually always work out of my head and writing things down and, and making notes uh, really changed a lot for me. I got you. That's cool. <clears throat> Tell the part about hate it. Tell the part about hate it. Hate <laughs> what? I guess you know what he's talking about. You're laughing. So <laughs> you hate what? Well, uh, whenever I start uh, prepping my meat and I tell everybody I hate it, you better look out. <laughs> that's, that's good oh yeah you know sometimes you got that good one is you just know and yeah. uh you know i had a brisket the other day i've had two that i've been i had two really good ones i was down in marksville and Lee hickle was part next to me and i just i took i took a picture of it and i said i said i just want you to know i'm gonna kick your butt in marksville because this is the first place brisket and he oh he was trash talking. Uh, we were, me and Lee we have a good time trash talking each other. I don't know why he ain't on here tonight. Anyway, and I he kept on and kept on. And so I, he just seen the picture. So I got ready to I pulled it out of the refrigerator. And I walked over there and I just set it down. I said, "Do you want to rub it now? Because this is the first place brisket." He looked at it and he's like, "Holy crap, that brisket looks good." I said, "Don't worry, it's the first place one." Sure enough, I got a first place brisket. So awesome. a couple weekends ago, we was here in Shreveport. I had another brisket. It was a really good looking brisket. I just sent him a picture and I just said, I just telling you, you know, things can repeat again. I'd be dang if I didn't get another first place brisket. So anyway, um, well, that's good, man. It seems like you've been doing really, really well. I know you're on back to back grand champions. You just won the hold them and hit them big, huge competition. there, stacked beyond stacked field. And uh, to go through that type of eliminations, you know, it's one round, you know, you, you have to stand out and, Apparently, you've got some things figured out. We're really happy for you. So, um, all right, Matt, real quick, let's let's kind of get some things from you. Let's hear a little bit about Matt Overson, what happened through this last year. What have you got on the lookout for this year? And then we'll get to the big announcement that you kind of want to make as well. Let's kind of really cover, you know, what you did. I know you didn't get a chance to cook a lot this year. You've been doing a lot of things, development and things. We'll get to that. So I know that's why you didn't cook a lot. Uh, yeah. I know you did get your golden ticket, correct? Yes. Yep. Yeah. I so got mine got, back in, uh, let's see, last February. Last February. So you got it early then. Okay. Did you get yeah. a chance to cook a lot? You probably did, what, 15 or 20 cook-offs this last year? I think I did a few more than that. Um, okay. Uh, probably about 25, 30. 25 or so. Okay. Yes. I know you, I know you was, you was hitting on them. So as you always do, but now we're coming into world, uh, the world championship. Uh, what have you got? Are you doing anything any different? I know you haven't got a chance to cook a lot because of all the other stuff going on, but are you going to kind of get into that mindset of I'm fixing to start tearing it up. I'm going to start cooking steak. I'm going to start getting my techniques down. What is your mindset going in? Because it's less than two months away. Um, well, I go to the MBBQA, um, here in a few weeks down in Orlando. Uh, they have three comps down there. Um, so I'm going to try just a few more things. I've been, I've been throwing stuff at the wall to see sticks lately, just trying new things, but, uh, I'm gonna cook uh, three times down there 
And when I get back, um, I'll probably have my mind set on what I'm going to start doing. Uh, okay. I'll keep cooking all the way up until Worlds. All the way up to Worlds. Okay. So what will you do? You just you're, Are you going to go to any competitions or are you going to just do at-home practices? Uh, the the MBBQA is, uh, has three comps there. So I'm going to cook okay. those three comps. Um, I've been working on a few other things, so uh, we're going to see how it how it turns out. Okay. Okay. All right. So anything that people need to know, first timers, we've got, I'm sure we got some steak cookers on here. A few tidbits of some things that they probably need to get ready for if they've never cooked the world uh, championship. Uh, just check your list. Um, go over it a few times. Make sure you have everything. Uh, if you don't, you can always borrow stuff. There's always people out there let you borrow anything you need. Um, yeah. Oof, I don't. I haven't had a list. I'm I'm flying in and then I'm flying out. So I uh, I don't have. Uh, I'm not bringing my own gear this year. So right. We'll see how that goes. Are you Are you still cooking on the M16? Yes, I want. Okay. Uh, I want one of the new M80s. Is what yeah, I want. Yeah. Now so. tell me about that because somebody posted a video. Oh, it was a cute little video on TikTok. I, I, maybe it was Raymond or somebody Raymond Raymond, Raymond, Raymond yeah. yeah Raymond Patterson I think it was and so what's the deal with an <laughs> M80 it looked just like an M16 uh, it's half the size so uh Tim Brown has been working with M grills um the it was brought up probably oh man a year and a half ago um and then uh, Travis could not you know he could just didn't have the time to to make a prototype uh, when Travis sold in grills um, over in Omaha, uh, those guys, um, Tim called them up and said, hey, you know, can you make me this? And they're like, yeah. So they made him a prototype. Uh, he went over to Omaha to cook the triple, and they had one ready for him in like a week and a half. Uh, he used it. Uh, him and Sandy both did. Um, loved it. And then now it's in production. So, so, so. All right. So, is it just the same grill except it's it's not as wide? What? Tell me. Do you know anything it's, about it, it? It 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 it's it's half the size. So, and it's half the weight. So, it's the same. I think. Uh, depth. Not the depth. No, it's not the same depth. It's a little bit shorter. Um, okay. But it's um um it's half the length. Okay, half so. the length and a little bit shorter in depth, and the height and stuff looked like it was about the same. I think so. I, I haven't I haven't got my eyes on one um, right. yet, but, but I talked to Tim quite a bit about it because uh, he was supposed to tell them what to fix, what not to fix, uh, what he liked about it. So he's kind of perfected that whole little thing. So okay, and then they built it off of his recommendations. They built the new M80 off of that. Yeah, yes. Yeah, he talked to their he talked to their design team and. Uh, and got it all handled, which is awesome because you know that things weigh eighty pounds, so this yeah. is a lot. This is a lot lighter. Right, it's gonna be about half the weight or so. That's pretty cool. All right, yeah. so you're gonna go in, you're gonna cook, you're gonna get ready. Where are you going after that? Uh, aren't you going out to Vegas or something after that? Yeah, me and Craig Carter go out to Vegas for the Connect show for a week. Uh, we're cook cooking live fire and doing a bunch of stuff out there uh, for a couple companies. Um, so we start there on uh, Tuesday and we cook all the way till Sunday live fire for the, a lot of the show. Okay. So. so tell us about some new things. I know for the last all last year, you was working on a, a bunch of new products, a new adventure. <clears throat> Uh, do you want to talk a little bit about that now and maybe just give a little sneak peek into what's coming and then we'll get you back, you and Craig back on when uh, it's time to let this baby rock and roll. Yeah. So we've, uh, we've been working on this for almost two years, uh, going on to, yeah, to almost two years. Um, this development, uh, we've been using stuff in different comps, um, once we got it perfected that we liked it, we started giving a little bit of samples out to people. Um, it started hitting really well. Uh, I think Craig won seven or eight comps with uh, the AP. Um, it just pairs really, really well with everything we got going on. So uh, the marinade is being switched over from the Wicked Pig to the Aces Wild name. Um, 
same marinade, um, everything just different label. Uh, we have uh, pork rub. Um, it should be bottled here real shortly, along with uh, the marinade, which is the label over. Okay. Uh, we have um, uh, steak rub uh, in the development also. Um, it should be a sample ready here shortly. Um, and then some other stuff that we don't want to reveal. <laughs> okay. So you, I heard an all-purpose rub, rebranding the Wicked Pig marinade, and a pork rub. And a steak rub. Yep, and a steak rub, all. yep. And a steak rub, okay. And then you got yep. some other things that you're working on as well, okay. Are you yep. going to keep the name, you know, Ace's Wild Wicked Pig so it doesn't get too far from that? Are you going to still kind of keep that since so many people know what that is? Yeah, so it'll say Ace's Wild on the label, and in the subtitle down there, it'll say OG Wicked Pig on there. So we kept that part there of it. There you go. Um, but Good. the Ace's Good. Wild is... Uh, all geared around um, gambling. So everything has like a gambling theme name. So, you right. know, like full house or, you know, two of a kind right. or, you know, whatever it is and, and right. revolving around gambling. Cause the label is, is geared around that too. Uh, it was kind of tough to come up with a new name and, and think of something cool. And uh, right. we did it and, it took about uh, six months. We had a company uh, draw what we wanted um, in our mind, and they did a great job. So, That's and awesome. then uh, they're working on a website now too um, for everything for directions. We're gonna sh shoot videos. Uh, Craig, you know, as the ancillary points champion this year, so right. we're going to uh, shoot videos for you know different various things. Okay, that's cool. That's cool. So, so now I know why we had the aces. The uh, uh, I think it was a royal straight flush that you had tattooed on the pig, right? So now we know why the aces wild was on there. It was a it was a royal straight flush that was on it. Yeah, why not? If you're gonna go big, go big, right? So yep, yeah. It's just it's gonna be it's gonna be fun. I mean, we got we already got uh, some apparel made up. We already have hats. Um, working on some shirts. Uh, we uh, partnered with Dry Duck on that to uh, get a lot of jackets and stuff like that. Um, we got uh, made full stuff boxes. People's... How? What's that? Full boxes would be good. Full, full boxes, boxes yeah. to put your full. He makes all that stuff, so oh, we're, we'll talk about go. that. You, yeah, there, so there that go. he can take your logo and he can laser it right into it, man. That would be cool. A lot of people, yes. you know, I mean, they're really cool. And if you've got them there, people are going to buy them. The problem is, you know, you have to wait and get them. And eh, sometimes it takes three or four weeks. So you go ahead and keep James busy for another month where he can go to another competition <laughs> and, and order like 10 of them and throw them back there and, and you'll sell them. I mean, I'm telling you, they're nice to have. So, you know, I've always been wanting a box because, man, I, I carry that foil everywhere. And, uh, man, the, it just they just destroyed. break down. Yeah. 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 I, I ended so, up using half the oil and throwing the rest of it away. Yeah. James, pull that box out, man. Let's see a little bit of the woodwork that you uh, that you be throwing out there, man. You want to see something nice? Here's one I just made. Look at there. That's, That's for cool. me, Hustler. Yeah. Just made that today. Oh, oh man. Look at that. First place port. Lift the lid up. Let us see. on It's all on a hinge lid and everything, isn't it? Oh, man. Look at that. I love it. Oh, yeah. Got a blade. Got oh, yeah. a blade in it. Yeah. And this. How much? Uh, what is a typical price of one logo burned in on top of the lid for like an eighteen-inch full? Hundred dollars. Hundred bucks. Okay. That's and then not bad. That's that's. Do you do them for the twenty-four-inch full? That's all I use is twenty-four. I haven't made them for twenty-four-inch. Okay. I even had a guy messenger from Canada wanting. 24 inch and 12 inch yeah it, i can make them yeah all you but gotta it, do is get the full measure it and put a little extra room on the end to drop it in so but uh all these are based off of our 18 inch foil right okay so what are they made out of are they made out of birch or oak or what uh these are out of poplar okay out of pine i've made them out of cedar oh I've wow red oak it, it just all comes with a different price yeah, yeah yeah but they uh they're nice and wow. i i got tired of having my boxes uh get damp at night leaving them out on the pit yep. get up the next morning the box is falling apart uh 
my nephew said, hey, build me a full box. So I built him one, posted on Facebook, and uh, 127 boxes later is where we are today. Wow. And that's within a year. Wow, that's a lot of boxes. <laughs> yeah. And, and, there, and that's just word of mouth. I know you're not advertising this it's all, anywhere. It's all Facebook sharing. Yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, Matt, you may have to hook up with him and get you one for Aces Wild. That would be your logo yeah. on that box would look freaking great. So I've shipped them all over. Yeah, that would look freaking wicked awesome. So where do you yeah, where I do mean, you where do you live? I live in Dickinson, Texas. Texas? Yep. I've, shipped, I've shipped to Alabama, I've shipped to uh South Dakota, Colorado, Kansas. I'm building a uh SDA champion uh box for a cook off in Alabama. Okay, cool. There you yeah, go. Nice. Yeah, wait, wait till the SCA guys get a hold of them. You know, oh, yeah. they're, they're only there's only a thousand of them people out there. So I told my wife she's gonna have to learn some things out in the shop. Yeah, that's for sure. So let's see some of the trophies that you did. I, you held up earlier the one that you did for Joey Smith. We had him on here last uh, weekend. Yeah, but, uh, He's got uh he builds some absolute check out this trophy real quick, Matt. Oh, this thing is the uh oh look at there. Uh, it's got a little barbecue grill right there. There we go. Back to your the other way a little bit. There we go, a little bit more that away. So he's got the Texas Chrome Heroes logo and put in the back. He made a little Weber kettle. He actually made that and put it in the trophy. Drop it down just a little bit, James. Just come straight down with it. Straight down. Down, 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 straight down, just like that. There we go. A little bit more, a little more. Stop right there. So, yeah, you can see second place brisket. Man, it's got the flames on it. God, that thing looks nice. That is going to be some great trophies. So, uh, hey, if any promoters are out there or if you know somebody that's, that's working to promote stuff, you know, man, it's always nice to have a really nice trophy. And... Uh, I mean, just roughly, James, how much would a trophy? That's a pretty nice trophy. Oh, yeah, yeah so I, do, I do them by packages. I mean, I, and I work with folks. You know, if it depends on what the foundation is, um, it, these Texas Chrome Heroes, I, you know, I got a place in my heart for the veteran. Yeah. I just worked a lot with Dennis Butterworth with the uh, War Pig deal, and uh, I built all their awards for that uh, cook-off they just had this last weekend. So it, it, it's all based on what it is because I, I I try to do some good things and a lot of people sell seasonings and sauces. I sell woodwork. Yeah, Dustin, I don't know why you don't have some of these sitting in your store, buddy. I mean, <laughs> this thing here is freaking. They're awesome. I mean, it's just nothing like it. So <laughs> for Dustin's uh, cook off at his store, he, yeah, he, yeah. Uh, we're working together. Yeah, we <laughs> so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. we, we, we do we do a we do a, a competition in uh, kansas city every year craig puts it on uh that'd be cool to do uh some of those for that um, yeah that would be really a, cool. that would be a really cool i mean you get a trophy right i mean to me if i was at a competition i would love and you could put first place steak on it right man i'd take yeah. that over a trophy all day long because i'm going to use that Every time I'm out and everything. So, all right, Corey, we got our uh, James. We got Corey Rush wanting to know the website. Do they, is, do you have a website or is they just I got a Facebook page? Okay. So, so Minoti Wood Crafters on Facebook. You can message me there. Uh, you can see my work on that site, and uh, that's where I take all my orders on messaging there. Man, O T T I. Woodcrafters, Minoti Woodcrafters. All right, I'm going to grab it and drop it in the Woodcrafter. Yeah, there we go. One second. I'm going to copy this. Give me one second, guys, and I'm going to drop it in the chat. And here we go. Here's your link to it. Ah, uh, what did I just do? This thing's trying to put something else. That ain't what I copied. Let's try that one more time. Sorry, guys. Give me one second. See if I can find this link and drop it in the chat. I don't know why. So are you are up. you are you lasering that stuff on top of there? Is that what that is? Yeah, laser engraver and uh, shoot me a logo and I put it in Photoshop, manipulate it. And I've I've engraved some things that people took a picture off the side of their cook off trailer. Oh and, wow! And they'll say, "Well, this is the only thing I have," and uh, so uh, yeah, I, I pull it in, put it in in 
in the computer and we'll make it work. Wow. That's cool. And I'm, yeah. Am I in? I've shipped these things all over the place. A guy in South Dakota called me and he was in SDA and he saw them on my Facebook page. So I made him one, shipped it to South Dakota. Okay. I know which comp right. that is. There's only one. There's only one in South Dakota. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right, y'all got the link. There you go. He can hook you up. Let me run back up there. I've got two links in there. I've also just typed in the name so people can see it. But you got the link there. Uh, is he talking about you, Greg? Yeah, probably so. Let's see. He's got wood. <laughs> uh, awesome foil boxes. He's making some awesome trophies too. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, that's pretty cool, man. Yeah, I think I, that's I, gonna be the, the the metal ones are cool, but uh, those are next level. I mean, no, oh, that's nice. Yeah, uh, it's there too, man. For the uh, the war pig uh, cook off this last weekend and. Dennis Butterworth just came up with them as, you know, he came up with an idea and he said, come up with something. So they, they were, they were pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Candace, I know, you know, quite a few folks in the promotion. So since Jim James, some business, man, I, I think this would be, I just, I can imagine that box with the first place stake, you know, across the top of it. Right. So man, that would, that's something like I said, I think that's better than a tr trophies are great, but man, that's something you can use every time that you go in and out. So, you know, or going every weekend, week out going to competitions and stuff. So the uh, Cedar awards, I cut out, I cut them out of uh, live edge. So that's not just a, uh, you know, rough edge cedar. You buy at the store. These are, uh, these are out of logs. I got you. So my question would be, and I would be scared to use something out of cedar because cedar just has such a, very strong smell right i would be concerned that that is going to permeate somehow or way into that full no no no, not the full boxes the okay the plaques okay the yeah plaques. the trophies the plaques stuff like that yeah okay yeah this, like this that this is five edge cedar yeah okay and so the the, the full boxes are just made more out of birch or something like that there, i use poplar i use pine things like that and okay. uh and and i spray coat them to where you know if you get sauce on them or things like that you can wipe them down so they're coated and uh they got a hacksaw blade for a cutter yeah yeah i saw that yeah i saw that yeah that's the best way to do it it'll never go dull so never go dull. yeah not for cutting that and i had one one time and man he put some kind of varnish on it oh my god it stunk so bad. I mean, it was so freaking strong that I was like, there is no way I'm going to put my foil inside that thing. I literally, I still got it sitting down here with the lid open. And finally, after about eight months now, it doesn't smell like varnish. So uh, that thing stunk. I was like, man, why would you send me that? That thing, I mean, I could have got higher than a kite just with the freaking box being in the trailer. So much less me sticking my foil in that thing. I was like, man, I ain't running my first place brisket. So, uh, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know if it was an acrylic lacquer or what, but man, it was stout. So it's got to be something don't better put that than too that. Close, don't put it too close, too close to the pit. It'll just spontaneously. Oh, that damn thing would have caught on fire. I mean, it was, it was brutal. So, well, James, man, I tell you what, it looks like you got some great stuff. I hope people are on here getting a chance to see. Uh, once again, I'm going to go back and grab that link real quick and put it uh, up on the board. So give me one second, guys and gals. Don't want to leave y'all out. And let's go create a deal. I'm going to throw this up here real quick and add the banner. And then I can put this up on the thing. There you go. There it is. There you go. I mean, I got a link in there, but for people that's, yeah. that sees us on YouTube and stuff like that, that link may not be there. It may not be in the chat. So now you've got it. If you want to see, find him, you can just go to Facebook, Minotti Wood Crafters. All one. Uh, it's yeah. all one. Yep. And uh, I'm a one just, fan, so. There you go. Agree. There you go. Well, man, that is absolutely awesome. So what, what have you got coming up, uh, James, for the year? I mean, you know, you just got through crushing you know, a big one. I, I saw somebody post something about the San Antonio. Yes, Are you sir. going to San Antonio this weekend? 
Yeah, me and a couple I, – I joined another team at San Antonio and uh, heading there Thursday morning. Okay, good. San good. Antonio. That's, Antonio. that's going to be good. That's a that's a big one. That's the biggest one there is. There's probably, what, 380 teams there. So uh, Last year was 290-something, 298. Okay, 290. Yeah, that's a lot of teams. So – yeah, that's gonna that's gonna be a big one. Well, good luck there. I know you'll probably do some of the six packs as well. That are yeah. actually, I guess it's gonna be the nine pack because Joey said in Dustin, I'm gonna have to get Dustin on here here pretty soon. But I mean, we had talked about trying to get Joey and Dustin on it uh, last week, but eh, just I had another steak cooker and I told Joey get it all finalized. Once you get it all done, we'll get him and Dustin on here so we can talk about that. But he he kind of told us there was gonna be nine. They're gonna take the best six out of that for the point series. So I think that's going to be good. Are you going to try to do some of those as well? Oh, yeah. I'll try to do some of those. Yeah, that, that's pretty close to me. And uh, I'm going to try to hit six of them see if I can do something. Yeah, that's going to be good. Well, man, you've been cooking lights out. Congratulations. Uh, on a really, really good year, man. Way to get – I mean, there's nothing like starting the year off like that with a big one like that. And, and you yeah. closed out. So you've got some things really figured out. You know, you won your last one. Uh, back in late November, early December as well. So back-to-back uh, -back GCs always gets the juices flowing. Anytime that you, you roll out there, it makes you feel like you have finally got some things figured out. And it seems like he does. And thank you for your support for Barbecue Champs. I know Corey and Robert appreciate it. I know Joey does. All the money that comes in through Robert's class goes to, every bit of it goes to the Texas Chrome Heroes. So uh, Robert is just doing so much to help Joey. Absolutely. So... Uh, what does James cook on? He had mentioned it earlier. I'll let him mention it again. So I use a Lone Star Grills offset for my brisket and use uh, race crew drum smokers for uh, for chicken and ribs. For chicken and ribs. There you go. All right. Um, all right. Well, James, have you got any sponsors or anything? I know there's one right there that you definitely want to talk okay. about. But uh, like, go ahead and mention real quick some of your sponsors and stuff and give them a shout out. Oh, yeah. Uh, barbecue store, Dustin Stanley always comes through. I mean, I 100%. ordered something yesterday and it was on my door at 10 o'clock this morning. Yeah. Always great service. Anything you want, he, he's got air, all the, all the good stuff, right? Yeah. I have, you know, I got race crew drum smokers. I've got three of them. They run smooth. Uh, Chopping Block and Webster supplies my good products. Uh, Majak Meats and Conroe. Uh, I've got uh, Smoking Wizard. You, you see me yep. post him on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, old Vince. Uh, his stuff is wonderful. Okay. Uh, I I use a lot of his things and uh, text original charcoal. Uh, Joey Machado. I've been following him for a long time. Every time he changes companies, I I change with him because right. he is the master of charcoal. I think. Yep. And uh, you know I. I've cooked on Lone Star Grills now for about the past six years and uh, got an offset cabinet. And I'm old school. I, I burn wood. Yeah. So yeah. I, I got to keep with my keep with my wood burning. That's right. That's right. Well, that's awesome. Well, man, I hope you have another good cook off in San Antonio. You've been killing it. Keep it rolling. You're on a roll right now. So it, just, just say you hate that meat and you'll be in good shape. So I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> Oh, all right, Matt, we're going to turn it over to you real quick, brother. Um, I know that you've got a lot of stuff coming. Uh, obviously, we're going to get you and Craig uh, on here again. When do you think you're going to have the rollout of all the new product? I know you said the new labeling's being done on four products. When do you think that's um, going to be ready? And then when do you think the full lineup of everything, the full launch of everything's going to be ready? Uh, we should have... Um product uh should be new labeled uh within the next few weeks um okay. it has to be because it's got to go to worlds um right. and it's got to go to vegas so okay. um the pork should be right behind that um then the other two uh will be shortly behind that one so uh, everything's clicking along pretty good uh once we get uh the field tests are done on two of them so uh they're they're in line to to be putting bottles so, okay. Yeah, so label, probably labels are labels are made. Everything's good to go. Trademarks are all back. We're ready to rock. So okay. So probably maybe the first of June you'll have everything fully ready. Maybe. Oh yeah. Um, June, July. Supposed to. 
yeah well the other the other two uh, the other two should be right behind the first two and then the, uh, the other okay. stuff uh, we're working on um we want it out before summer for sure before summer we want it, okay we, we want it spring we're pushing yeah. for it so right uh, we got a few got... we got a few things to talk about and then um we'll just go from there go from there all right so. well the Thank your sponsors. I know you got a bunch of them as well. Oh man, uh, White Lightning for the first one, man. Eric and Alan, those guys have always uh, believed in me, and I believe in them, and they're just uh, two great guys. So mm-hmm. I'm uh, happy to be happy to know those folks. So right. number one, White Lightning, B and B Charcoal. Uh, thanks again for picking me up again this year. Uh, it was great last year, and even better this year. So. Appreciate that one, uh, Gunther Wilhelm knives. Um, I love yeah. I love Gunther Wilhelm yeah. knives. So awesome. David's a David's a great guy. So he is. Oh, what else do I got? Uh, Midwest Dust, uh, Jeff Jacobson, uh, another great product, and uh, Grizzly Coolers. Okay. So that's good. Awesome. That's good. Love it. Good deal. Well, I hope everybody's enjoyed our show. I want to thank both of you guys for taking a little time out and, uh, you know, coming on, talking a little bit about barbecue and steak. And uh, we appreciate both of y'all being on tonight. So, thank you. Um, Thanks for having me. I'm absolutely. I hope everybody's enjoyed our show tonight. I've got one more we're going to be doing next Tuesday. And then the following Tuesday after that, I will not be here because I'm going to be in Las Vegas on vacation. So I'm going to be off. I guess that's going to be third, fourth, fifth, probably around the sixth or seventh, whatever what date that is. Uh, I will not be here. So to let you know, heads up. And, uh, you know, I'm thinking about, you know, Matt, we had the Clash of the Titans with you and, Mar- and uh, Marissa in the parking lot. It was just a one series deal. I'm trying to figure out a way how I could get that to load and actually have it just to pop up. And that would air that night. That I know Marissa would absolutely love seeing that again. <laughs> so yeah. I, I may I may have that. I may at least can go in and set it up and click it. Maybe I'll be close to a computer that night. And uh, anyway, so but definitely we'll be back, Lord willing, next uh, Tuesday night, se- seven o'clock Central, eight o'clock Eastern. Uh oh, what we got? One more. Uh, He's got it. Well, I you know I I want some revenge, but I want it with oh. Terry. You want, oh, you, you want Terry again, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, be careful what you wish for. Just like you said that to Marissa. And I, you know, you saw what happened. So, you know, you, you called were, her out on this show, too. So that may not be your best bet. So you put, you pushed it into that one, but I want, I, I want I did. a little bit of, I want a little bit of Terry back. So you want some Terry back. That's funny. <laughs> well, we are possibly going to be back at the, uh, the World Food Championship. Uh, the World Championship cooking again. I don't know why I said World, uh, the the SEA uh, World Championship, and uh, we may we may be doing some filming. I'm not exactly sure who I'm going to film yet. I do have a couple people that I've already talked to that I think would be really good. And um, anyway, so but that may could happen too. So let me let me just see. So. Anyway, but I do appreciate everybody being on here once again. Thank you so much for being loyal listeners. Uh, let everybody know about us. We do these podcasts every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock Central, 8 o'clock Eastern. And uh, we always like to go out there, uh, talk about barbecue, talk about steak, mix it up a little bit. And we just find it's a lot of fun. I appreciate everybody so much. And as we always say at the end of our classes, y'all go 